Hey there, my name is Mark, also known as DJ NSM, and I'm here today to, sh to show you how to control the banks on the Livid Instruments bass controller. I'm going to be doing this in Ableton. This basic idea crosses over to any respectable digital audio workstation or MIDI type of program that's uh, on your laptop, and it's a very straightforward means to do this. So we're going to push all that information up front and teach you how to do this and get you kind of along your way. Then we're going to kind of break down and talk a little bit more about what's going on in these ideas and then expand that a little bit and uh, get into mapping and how to work with this in a controllerism or grid performance sort of scenario. So let's start off with the tutorial part, what you really need to know. Starting with a new set in Ableton, go into your MIDI track, insert yourself a MIDI clip. I'm going to call this one 2, and then do this again, and I'm going to ins uh, uh, rename this one as 4. And uh, these are going to be the banks that we're selecting, bank 2 and bank 4. With one of those selected, I've selected the 2, come down and make sure that your notes is on the notes window for the um, for the MIDI clip and where it says program choose the number two do the same thing for four but choose four you might notice if you read the directions that currently on the livid site they say that bank zero bank zero sorry the value of zero equals bank one and the value of one equals two that is a case in uh, in computer land but in human land one for one this is actually uh, an idea called zero offsetting and computers start with zero and the humans start with one ableton has offset it so by choosing two you are selecting two by choosing one you are selecting one so they're a direct relationship just a little pointer there so you don't get confused now with that done we have to make a couple more changes so uh open up your IO window. The first thing you want to do is send it out to, you have to send this information to the base controller. On my Mac OS X uh, laptop here, it's base 8 B8 controls and I'm using all default values and the default value for this change parameter to be sent to is channel 16. So by changing this to channel 16 what we're doing is we're firing off a quickie little command and it sends program change number blah to the base which receives that and says I know what to do and does a bank change okay that is everything you know everything you need to know from here on out we're just going to show you how to do it better faster and and what what the the fancy business is that is everything so just hang in with me for another second and we'll just prove it so by adding two MIDI channel uh, MIDI tracks we're going to name these channel 2 and channel 4 and anybody who's sniffed MIDI in uh, and Ableton knows that it packs a really good buzz, but more importantly, you can get a lot of information and a lot of cool testing. So what I've done right here is I've selected to listen or sniff MIDI from the bass controller on these two tracks, and I have selected them as channel 2 and channel 4, and with monitor on. So I'm hitting the buttons right now, and well, there's some information coming in there on channel 4. So let's make that MIDI that MIDI change. We're going to just hit the 2 button, let the dummy clip fire off, stop it, and there we go. Channel 2 is picking up. We're going to hit number 4, and we're going to stop it. And we're now playing on 4. I'm hitting the exact same note on the bass, but I've changed the bank underneath it. So there's your fancy business. Let's do a little bit of cleanup. One thing that you're going to want to do is toggle your launch window for the MIDI clips, and this is my preference, this is my suggestion, just set them to none. That's going to make this change instantaneous, so you can see as I change these, it happens. And now I'm just going to continue to hit the uh, hit that button, you may hear me pecking away here, and you can see that as I change, it's it's just instantaneous, it's perfect. Livid, you've done a great job, It's it's just... It's going to be so much fun. I'm just starting to get my brain wrapped around all the potential. And that's that's your core stuff. Another thing that you might notice is that I'm looping MIDI clips in the background. It doesn't take up a lot of CPU, but it's best practice. It's best uh, citizen style to turn the loop off and just let it, let it go by itself. So that now dies, but it still changes that information. And the change happens as soon as that clip is fired. The clip is fired and it says, program change, blah, base says gotcha and does it. So in working with this in templating you can of course access these through scripting and the uh, remote script which which I have been notoriously in, uh, involved with a lot. However you have a channel differential you'd have to run multiple scripts or you'd have to channelize your scripts and that's all fine and dandy but scripts only go so far and static mapping is 
indeed a little faster from from the testing that we've done so here's how you do it with static mapping just kind of a little prototype to wrap your head around we're working with two channels here that are going to be our control surface and we're going to switch between those so when we are in channel 2 and firing channel 2 we want to have access to switch to 4 and then when in 4 we want access to switch to 2 so right now we are in channel 4 so let's get ourselves back on channel 2 and you can see that we got channel 2 information coming in. Now we're going to go into the MIDI map mode and we're going to select the 4 dummy clip and I'm going to hit the button here. It happens to be C1. Note channel 2, C1. Now we're going to switch ourselves over to channel 4. Make sure that we have 4 information coming in. And then we're going to map the 2. And I'm going to use the same button in this case. There's problems when you have more than 2 channels, but it's great for demo. So when I hit this, you can see I am just changing the channel. So by hitting another note in that button, you can see that it's just it's just beautiful. So if you were doing a three channel scheme, then you would need to have access to the other two in all of the other three channels. So there's like this mathematical thing in there and I'm going to leave that up to Bill Clinton or you and your pencil. I'm not going to sit here and explain all the different ways to do it. You get it. You're smart people out there. You bought a livid controller. I know you're smart. So that pretty much wraps it up. Again, my handle on Twitter is really a great place to kind of talk and chat about this. The handle is at DJNSM, and uh, I often write articles or publish things just to answer really good questions, and uh, I do all sorts of fun business and instruction and consulting on Ableton here and there as I find time between programming really cool awesomeness. So there you go. Life story. We are done. Enjoy yourself and have fun with that bass.